Welcome to Subramani. Uh, I'm making one of my favorite videos on uh, mistakes that equity investors make. This is going to be slightly different from uh, in the mistakes that uh, mutual fund investors make. So, so let's start. Both of them start at the um, at the same place, right? <coughs> Uh, I've written a book on gold-based investing, right? So here, uh, you can be rich too with gold-based investing. So the first step which you have to take in any journey is to make a map. Uh, the first step that you have to take in uh, investment, uh, any investment that you make is to have your investment goal very clear. Uh, if you do not have your investment goal very clear, it is like saying, I want to go out, but I don't know where to go. Take any simple act, even if you want to go out and eat, you have to first decide whether you want to eat Chinese food, Indian food, continental food, right? Uh, do you want to drive? Do you want to walk? Do you want to order out? Do you want to uh, go there and eat, right? So all these questions have to be answered even before doing a simple act of eating. And this, if you're eating in a group, you have to uh, call people, put up on WhatsApp messages, right? And then coordinate. Similarly, for investing, if you do not know the goal for which you are investing, you are already in trouble. Um, because uh, it's only your goal which tells you what should be your time horizon for which you are in investing. Are you investing for 1 year, 3 year, 5 years, 27 years, right? If you do not know that, then you are just buying some ad hoc shares and saying, if it appreciates, I will sell. If it does not appreciate, I will hold or things like that. It becomes too vague. And uh, at the time of having to sell it, you wouldn't know how to, uh, whether to sell it, whether to hold it, how long to hold it, right? None of that you will know. So first is to have an investment objective very clear as to why you are buying that particular share, right? Well, why you are investing at all, right? Are you investing for your uh, uh, child's marriage? Are you investing for your uh, child's education? Are you investing for your own retirement? Because if your child is already 15 years old, then your uh, child's uh, education uh, fund is required in the next three years or six years or seven years. That's it. So it's uh, just a seven year time frame. But if you are retired uh, for your retirement that you're saving and you're just uh, say 47 years of age, uh, that means you've got at least another 13 years minimum to go, maybe 15 years to go, uh, maybe even earlier, but at least uh, you know that uh, you will work somewhere. Even if you lose this job, you will take up a job till you're for, uh, 65, 65. So if you at least know uh, for what you are investing, then the second one follows that you know the time frame for which you are investing because the lack of goals means you do not know what time frame that you are investing for. That is uh, problem number one and problem number two, right? And uh, another important thing is underestimating the time horizon that you are investing for. Uh, assuming you are uh, 51 years of age, then your life expectancy could be about 81, 82. But the minute you become 61, it could become 84, 85, right? Your expectancy changes according to the uh, actuarial tables. Uh, so, uh, even underestimating there by 10 years can be dramatically wrong. If you thought that you will die at 85 and you end up dying at 95, have you adequately provided for the last 10 years, right? So, the time horizon comes from knowing for which goal you are investing. Uh, the third thing which I find a big problem for today's generation which we did not have is your broker means a young uh, 24 year old, 25 year old who has got a target of increasing the revenues from your account. That's it. That person does not know portfolio construction, does not know why you are investing in equity, is nothing. They just know, oh sir, Raj Larson and Tubro, Lelo, 2,300 rupees uh, I mean, you are making no money, right? If you sell it, you sell it off at 2,400. But he has got a target of creating activity in your portfolio or she has got an uh, invested interest in uh, churning your portfolio. You don't have that. You don't need to do that, right? So there is conflict of advice in the sense that when we were younger, uh, the broker was a person who had uh, some knowledge of the markets. He would ask questions. Why are you investing? How long will you stay invested? Are you a trader? Are you an investor? 
today your relationship managers know none of this they themselves don't know how to build an equity portfolio but they are your relationship manager and they will keep actively churning you and they will keep saying things like sir your portfolio is so much we will save so much on brokerage i said how do you know how much money you will save on brokerage no sir on an average assuming you churn your portfolio four times then so much and i said wow i don't churn my portfolio four times in four years there is no way how i'm churning my portfolio that much right so they don't know and so they are of no great help so a brokerage earlier used to be an uh, advisor come executor today it is purely an executor so uh, expecting to get help from the broker uh, today for building a portfolio is wrong completely wrong uh, another mistake which we make which we do not even realize that we are making is ignoring the impact of inflation on our portfolios uh, we have got used to a very low level of inflation since 2014 no i'm not talking as a modi supporter but uh, Ra raguram rajan came and said we will uh, target uh, inflation and then uh, we have been targeting inflation very well the government has cooperated and we are targeting inflation very well i had never thought that there would be a time in my life when the inflation in the us would be higher than the inflation in India, albeit for a small period, but it did happen. It was unthinkable because we used to see 13-14% inflation in India and 2-3% in the US or one, less than 1% in Japan. These countries just didn't have inf anything called inflation. Uh, so, uh, and sure, assuming that inflation will only be 4% could be wrong, it could be 8%. So, uh, don't make wrong assumptions and even if you have made some assumptions, review it at every year. Because when some of these numbers go wrong, it could go dramatically wrong. I mean, imagine uh, inflation doubling. You can't even think of it, right? But in the US, inflation went up almost 10 times from 1% to 10%. Though, of course, it was temporary. It came down. But can you even imagine that happening in India? No, because inflation in India has always been high. So, you, you can at best think it will go up. 30% but you, uh, will it go up uh, 100 times will it go sorry will it go up 10 times will it go up 100% uh, that seems to be very difficult at 7% but it happened in the US so be careful about what can happen and what can't happen also be very careful to understand that you do not understand many of these things right so the next mistake which people make is uh, completely making a mess of uh, thinking that they understand macros uh, I am on the Peter Lynch side of saying I don't understand macros and if you have spent 10 minutes on macros, 7 minutes have been wasted. Uh, macros don't really matter because in the short run your macros won't matter. In the long run, uh, you can't change too much about your macros. So, if you want to look at macro, look around yourself. Everybody around you has shifted to a bigger house, bigger car. Uh, more vacations, vacations in India, vacations abroad, expensive vacations, right? Everybody's uh, standard of living in terms of cash has definitely gone up. So, are you worried? Should you be worried about the macros? Uh, I don't think you should worry too much about the macros simply because we don't even understand how macros uh, will work. In if we do not understand macros in the longer run, what should we do? Uh, it's very difficult to say, but uh, try understanding macro just at the level at which the GDP is, what interest rates are. Beyond this, don't uh, get too much into uh, the services index is growing and the uh, manufacturing index is falling. Getting a uh, grip on all this and therefore its impact on the market is not going to be very easy. Make an attempt, but please understand that you are very vulnerable to your lack of knowledge of those things, right? Uh, another thing is uh, most people who buy equities have no clue how to create a portfolio. Portfolio construction is an art. You can completely avoid that by going to mutual funds. But if you are into equities and you think your substantial wealth of yours is going to be built with equities, you need to understand that you have to look at some uh, good portfolio uh, of a good fund manager or the Sensex and uh, Sensex or Nifty whatever and make sure that you are somewhere near it. You cannot have a portfolio of only BFSI or of only pharma companies. I have seen people do that. I have seen a doctor who was holding almost all the pharma companies that he knew. He said, oh, this drug is good, that drug is good. And his portfolio was just doing too badly. I mean, he could have been, he would have been much better off putting money in just one pharma fund and he could have got much better returns. 
he had been a big mess by having 20 30 companies i didn't even realize that so many listed companies uh, exist in pharma till i saw his uh, portfolio so uh, understanding which share to buy how much to buy and constructing your portfolio which includes portfolio sizing is not going to be very easy and you have to be willing to sit and learn if you don't learn you will make a big mistake so you will get biased towards your uh, b- business for example if you're a, a banking person you will have lot of banks in your portfolio if you are a software person you will have lot of software in your portfolio or a combination of two because saying oh i am a banker but i understand software or vice versa or the reverse whatever but you will you will end up not having any pharma and if you are a doctor you will have only pharma saying i understand pharma and you will not have anything else so this cannot happen so your portfolio construction has to be as per a plan and well executed you can go overweight a little bit here and there but you cannot be completely uh, eliminating certain important industries even having uh, uh, even after having a long term strategy of investing sometimes you get carried away uh, by some short term happening in the market for example you are very clear that you have invested for your uh, retirement and this was 2019 november so you put in say 30% of your money or 50% of your money and the remaining money was going through a systematic transfer plan then march 2020 happened covid happened and the market fell you panicked and you removed the money uh, perfectly possible that we all will have done that especially if we have a big stake in the uh equity markets right far beyond our capacity so if you are uh, un- unable to sleep with the asset allocation that you have done it means you have got too much money in equity you need to have lesser money in equity maybe but because you were worried about the short term volatility you removed all the money from equity or you read some article somewhere saying oh this fund house is done badly so you should remove all the fund uh, all the schemes of of that fund house which was stupid advice but it was available in the market you reacted on the basis of fomo you were worried that what will happen if the market continues to fall like this and you removed exactly in april 2020 where market was at its nadir that was a great time to be investing but you did the reverse you started uh, withdrawing all the money and keeping it in a uh, in a bank fd right so that is that is the most uh, obvious reaction when you hear of a worldwide panic uh, of some illness but come september and you realize that it was a huge mistake but you were afraid you were saying oh second wave third wave fourth wave and so you didn't invest till the markets went up much higher do these things happen yes so abandoning your long term strategy for something which happened in the short term is very bad and can be very hurtful because in the short term markets are very volatile based on that you cannot take a 20 year decision in the long run you would have got your 15% or 16% which is very good in a country where inflation is 7 uh but you, because you panicked at the wrong time or you panicked at all uh, that return was lost and why did you panic you panicked because it was a, a short term event which uh, marred your view on the long t- in the long term in the market and therefore you got out right so this uh, bad timing simply because you panic is bound to happen you have to learn to control your nerves if you are a good equity investor that that is what i'm saying the ability to judge risk what risk hits which part of your portfolio is very important for an equity investor uh it is not easy but if you can't control your fear greed regret etc then it's very difficult to be a, a good equity investor so my suggestion is create a group uh, group of friends or uh, maybe online uh, and uh, talk to each other about saying what really is fomo what is uh, why am i reacting like this is it right is it wrong have a listening post right a hearing board which will listen to you talk to you and all that it should not become too much of an obsession that you give up everything else except uh, chatting on this uh, forum uh, but find out from there whether you are reacting irrationally if your portfolio falls because the market falls that is natural but if your po- um, uh, portfolio does not fall as much as the market falls you have done a good job but if your market if your portfolio falls more than what the market falls it might be a good time to be sitting tight or investing more but you can do that only like i said the first thing if you do not know what are your goals chances are you will go wrong with uh, these things and therefore you are uh, judging risk very wrongly in the short run yes volatility is the risk in the long run it is inflation which is the risk 
so you uh, are worried about volatility so you say oh i'll put all my money in bank fd and you are ignoring the bigger risk of inflation right you cannot afford to do that uh then uh, totally avoiding foreign securities understand one thing if you see the msci index you will not see india india is just mentioned somewhere along with the emerging markets including china and we have a very uh, small weightage however you believe in indexing so you have invested in uh, indian index fund fantastic you have not invested anything abroad uh, that might be a wrong thing to do simply because you we are a global economy but you might as well take a stake in say china in japan in taiwan and there are funds like this available which are fund of funds where you have to put in the money and the fund manager will allocate between different countries or some uh, advanced uh, or developed country uh, index fund i think uh, there is something like that rather than try doing direct equities but some small portion 10% 15% like how you would put in debt or gold that should be in foreign securities also you cannot afford to ignore the us market whether you like them or don't like them right so you little bit of us a little bit of europe little bit of asia all that is needed in your portfolio especially if you are an equity investor i would suggest these through uh one more thing to be considered is uh, uh should you have uh, only mutual funds in a big uh, portfolio i would think no i would think you should have equity uh, and this video is being made for equity players but i would think you should also have mutual fund because certain asset classes it is almost impossible to reach out on your own right can you invest in uh, reits abroad can you invest in a foreign debt can you invest in a uh, bunch of foreign companies can you invest in say all the uh, tech majors right you cannot invest through uh, in, you can't invest into facebook and uh, google and all of them right it's very difficult to so could should you invest in a tech fund or you just invest in a global fund or you invest in one us fund one china fund one japan fund and a global index think about all this it cannot be one size fits all uh, i have my all my foreign investments are through indian mutual funds and i made them before this tax change so it will lie there whenever i need the money maybe 10 years later i might withdraw it and put it into some indian index fund till then let it be there because withdrawing is easy but if i invest back then all the growth there will get taxed as current income so considering taxation considering all that it is necessary that you should have some portfolio in mutual funds but keeping all money only in mutual funds without equity is also bad because you miss out on some companies which are which will never make it to the portfolio of a uh fund house for example lmw very unlikely that it will have an uh, sensible amount of shares in any fund uh, simply because it's too big a share very very volatile very illiquid so none of them will build a position will they be able to sell uh, 50 crores worth of lmw in a day extremely doubtful right so will uh, big funds invest no so that is the best way for you to buy a bosch or an mrf or any of those shares which you think the uh funds will never own right so these were some of the mistakes uh i i'm sure there are more but uh, this is what came to my mind thank you